Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1515. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to create a yearly income statement using the sum ifs functions. Now, actually, this question came from a student of mine at Highline who graduated and is out there working in accounting. And guess what? They sent me an Excel workbook with a question. And so we're going to answer that question. And in the meantime, we're going to remind ourselves how bad the merge and center feature is. And we'll get to see how to use sheet references and the sum ifs functions. Now, if we go over to the sheet yearly income statement, here's what this person did, F2. Oh, look at that. They're using sheet references. F6 plus F20, but all of those cell references are on the sheet weekly income statement. Now, rather than stringing together all of these individual cells, we can simply use the sum ifs function. And the reason we can use the sum ifs function is because we have the same template that lists sales, selling costs, inventory purchases, and other expenses. We want to replace all those long formulas with sum ifs. If we look at weekly income, sure enough, they have the same labels. Notice this column has all the numbers we need, and this column has all of the text we need. That means using some ifs, highlighting this column and saying, please look here and only find sales, it will be able to pick out that number. And then down here, it'll be able to pick up that number. Now, there's going to be a big problem here, so let's try some ifs. Now, let's go see if we can highlight that column of numbers for the sum range. Now, we're going to need to do a sheet reference. And the way you do that is you click on the sheet. Up in the formula bar, you can see, sure enough, in single apostrophes, that's the sheet name. Exclamation mark means this is a sheet reference. Now, watch what happens. These are the numbers, right? So I simply want to click and drag. Down. And what is happening? I do not want it to move to the side like that, getting D and E and F. I want it to go straight down. Well, we have a big problem. Now, here's our formula. I'm going to click Escape. And now we want to go back to the sheet, Weekly Income Statement, and see what is causing the problem. The problem is this. There, right here in a number of different places, they're using Merge and Center all over the place. Down here, totally unnecessary. Here, we can simply unmerge and then increase the column width. Up here, however, we might want things to be merged and center. But instead of using merge and center, I'm going to unclick that to get rid of it. And now we use Control-1 to open up Format Cells. And in Alignment, the substitute, which does not cause trouble like merge and center, is Center Across Selection. I'm going to click OK. Now we're going to have to manually go through and unmerge each one of these, clicking the Merge and Center button. Now I'm going to increase the column width between D and E. And probably we want to get rid of that column, but I'm going to leave it for now. Now I want to make sure that I can highlight. And sure enough, now we can highlight the correct D column and F column. Now I have to do this to every single template, but no problem. I'm going to highlight this template. And in Home Ribbon Tab Clipboard, I can double click Format Painter, or I can right click. And when I double click the Format Painter, it copies the formatting. And by double clicking, I can reapply this over and over, all the way down to the last one. Now, the paintbrush is still loaded, because now I want to go over to Yearly Income Statement and do the same thing here. Now, to turn the paintbrush off, I click Escape or come up and click the Format Painter. Escape, increase D column. Now, I'm going to keep that there as a trail and do our sum ifs formula off to the side. Equals sum ifs, the sum range. Click on the sheet. I'm going to use Control Home to jump to cell A1. And then very carefully, I'm going to click in F5 and then manually drag. And now I can drag all the way down to F169. I can see up in the formula bar, I need to lock this. So I'm going to use the F4 key to add the dollar signs. Now, up in the formula bar, I'm going to click. I see some range, comma, criteria range. And it's got to be exactly the same parallel range. 
So I'm going to select starting in D169 and go up all the way to D5, F4. Now criteria range 1, I type a comma in criteria 1. I don't remember what cell it is. I think it was D6. So I'm going to type D6, close parentheses, Control Enter. Control Enter brought us back to the sheet doing a sheet reference. And it kept the cell selected. But now I'm going to hit F2 because it's actually not D6. So I'm going to double click that and click on D5, Control Enter. Now I'm going to copy this down. And I see there's a 0 there. That means there's some problem. Uh, it says less selling costs. Guess what? I'm going to copy this, Control C. We need to be consistent, Control V. And there we go. Now I'm going to Control C and paste it into both cells for inventory purchases and other expenses. And so using some ifs without merged cells is more efficient than doing this long formula here. All right, so in this video, we saw how to summarize income statement data using some ifs. But first, we had to fix up and not use merge and center. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is fun. All right, we'll see you next video.